All right, welcome everyone. John Boyle, you want to start us off? Sure, happy to start. Julian, welcome. And uh, just want to kind of ask you what made Seattle a good fit for you and for agency. I know you had other options. So why this team? Why this defense? Yeah, I thought I saw a great opportunity to join a good team uh, who's led by, I think, a great head coach uh, who I think just gets it. Um, and so that's something I was looking for. I was looking for a nice fit. Um, and the culture is great. And so I think that kind of fits my style, my brand of football. Uh, and so, yeah, I think Seattle was the perfect fit for me. Corbin. Julian, welcome to Seattle. Looking at the film, it seems like you've played pretty much every position except defensive tackle since you came into the NFL. Uh, what, what have the Seahawks told you as far as how they plan to use you? Do you have a preference where you play position-wise? Yeah, I think they uh, they were excited about, you know, having the ability to put three safeties on the field. Um, and I think they saw, saw me as a good addition to who they have in their room right now. Uh, and so that's what I wanted. You know, I... I Fortunately, have the opportunity to grow with two savvy vets. You know, I'm a vet myself now, um, but I'm still 25 years old, so I'm still learning the game, uh, still trying to improve. And so that's kind of how they saw me fit, is continue to improve and grow in their system. Um, and yeah, what was, your, what was the second part of your question? Is there a spot that you prefer to play in, on the field, or do you just consider yourself a Swiss Army knife and you're just happy to be wherever they put you at? Uh, I don't know if I have, you know, specific spot you know I played corner in college I had some starts at nickel corner safety free and strong in the league um I don't know whenever I can make plays or wherever I can make plays I think is where I'm most comfortable I like to be in the action I think I play a tough brand of football and that's why I, I think they'll utilize me in that way thank you thank you Bob Condota Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear it there for a second. Um, hey, Julian, welcome to Seattle. Um, how did how did it how did the negotiations with Seattle sort of work? I know it was a little bit of a funky, maybe safety market and in, in this year. Just, just kind of wondering how that how that how it all finally ended up uh, signing with the Seahawks. Yeah, it was a it was a funky uh, safety market, you know, unfortunately. But you know, kind of in the I don't know how you can say eleventh hour, facing the last hour. Um, I get a call from Seattle. It was, you know, it was Eastern time uh, when it happened and I had a call like 11 p.m. Uh, they were flying me out the next morning. Uh, and so then all happened pretty quickly. Uh, had, and I was excited to really see it. Yeah, initially didn't start off as that. I thought I was just visiting, um, you know, so they can see if I was be a fit there. And then I, before the flight, you know, had the offer on the table. And, uh, and yeah, I, after I met, you know, Coach Carroll and everybody in the building, it just felt comfortable. And I think that's the biggest stressor of free agency is, you know, the unknown. I don't know the people uh, in the organization for the most part, um, but me meeting them and getting to know them, I mean, that was clear cut. I knew I was supposed to be there. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how the process went down. It was pretty fast. It all happened fast with Seattle. And I'm just really blessed that, you know, they called me. Was it a, was it hard to leave New York at all? Or? Oh. Uh, for sure, you know, having four years there, building something there, becoming a captain there, um, it was definitely comfortable. You know, like I said, you know all the people in the building, you know the team. You have had three years of rookies after. You know, I've helped uh, grow. Um, so yeah, it was tough. I think just from a people perspective, but I think for my game, I think I just my game was meant to be somewhere else, um, as uh, simply put as it can be, and it was meant to be in Seattle. Uh, and like I said, it's a blessing to have uh, a call um, from just an organization that is winning and I think has sights on winning in the near future. Greg Bell. Uh, hi, Julian. What is, from the outsider, from your perspective, the perception of Pete Carroll and the program he runs in the Seahawks organization? Yeah, you know, I'm a Notre Dame guy. Uh, and so... You know, he's uh, very infamous in uh, in Notre Dame history. The Bush push. <laughs> and so I, I was truly excited to meet him. I knew he did great things. He's been doing great things for a long time. And I was excited. I think that was the meeting that I had that just reassured everything. Um, just meeting him. Because he talks ball. He has energy. He has juice. I think he's for the players. 
And that's what I wanted. I just want somebody who would be for the players who can I can still learn from. And, you know, with his background in the secondary, I think that was a huge draw for me. Um, and I'm excited. I'm mean, really excited to just learn and pick his brain all the time. Uh, and, yeah, I think that's what the biggest draw was for Pete. And you said a couple times now the meeting with Carol reassuring you. What was it about it that he said or that he showed you that you're like, oh, this, this is the guy? Yeah, I think it was just I'm always looking for the ability to grow. Um, you know, I feel like I this past year I was just scratching the surface of the player I can be in this league. And so throughout free agency, I just wanted an opportunity to be at a place where that was, you know, that was possible. And just him, I mean, we started, you know, do with the we started with the casual conversation, you know, about family, background, all that stuff. Um, but when he's he couldn't help but talk ball with me, um, he was kind of going in and out, just talking ball, and I love that. Um, that's kind of the player I and learner I am. And so, you know, before you knew it, within five minutes of being in his office, we were at the computer going over some tape. Um, and so that that's what it was. You know, and when I was just watching tape with him, picking his brain, uh, him picking my brain, that that is what the reassurance came from. Brady. Hi, Julian. Uh, Brady Henderson from ESPN. Nice to meet you. Uh, just wondering how free agency went for you compared to what you expected it to be like. Yeah, I expected it to be uh, pretty good. You know, I was playing a good brand of football. My stats were pretty, were really good last year. Um, I was on the field all the time. I was pretty dependable. I've been dependable the past four years. I think I'm a player on the rise. I'm young. So a lot of things are going for me, I felt. And then just the market was, you know, tough for safeties. Um, that's just the reality. I, I didn't, wouldn't have expected it. Um, but it was what it was. And so when Seattle saw kind of where, where I was at contract wise, they jumped the opportunity to bring me on, which, you know, is exciting. And it makes you feel like you're actually, you're wanted in this process. Um, there's a few teams kind of down at the end, um, but I think the appeal to Seattle was too great for me to pass on. And then uh, when you came out for a visit, what all happens in a free agent visit? I think a lot of, a lot of people don't understand what really goes on during those. Yeah, so like I said, it was very fast, 11 p.m. I mean, we're getting ready to, for bed, basically. Uh, 11 p.m., I get a call, uh, say, see, I want to fly me out. I'm on the flight the next morning. Um, I'm at a layover uh, in Minnesota, maybe. Uh, and during that layover, I realized that I had an offer from Seattle. I thought I was just visiting initially. So I learned the layover they were going to offer me, um, or at least put one on the table, which is, you know, was good. And then get there and I meet with some coaches, had dinner with some coaches uh, at night. Uh, me and uh, Devin Bush went out with some coaches. Uh, I know him from you know, college experience uh, and kind of coming up. And uh, yeah, the next morning I'm at the uh, I'm in a hospital in Seattle getting my physical done. Uh, you know, they're checking out, you know, if I'm healthy, if all, you know, the joints, everything's working well. Uh, and then shot over to the facility. Uh, first meeting was with, you know, Coach Carroll. Uh, and I met Schneider. Then I met, you know, just various people. Then I met, you know, Coach Hurt. Um, I met uh, Coach Scott the night before at dinner. Um, so basically you're trying to meet people. You're meeting, you know, the coaches. Uh, for the most part, they have all my file. Um, from the combine or throughout the league and all the scouts have all that stuff. And so it was just kind of just a meet and greet. Um, and I was able to talk ball with a few people like um, Coach Hurt and Coach Carroll. And that is, you know, that was a highlight of the trip for sure. Thank you. And then I was on a flight very soon after, at like noon, after I met with everybody. So it was very quick in and out. Mike LaShawn. Hey, Julian, uh, so I, I jumped on a little late, so sorry if you were asked this already, but uh, did you call the plays in last year for the Giants? Yeah? Yeah, so I had the green dot kind of throughout camp and throughout the spring. Um, I basically was the backup green dot for the first half of the season. Xavier McKinney had it. Um, he was the first one, I was the second one. So if anything ever happened to him, I would take over kind of seamlessly. And then he kind of he had something happen with him like during the bye week, and so I took over. The rest of the season and playoffs and uh yeah it was a pretty seamless transition you know i get along with a lot of people in the locker room and you know i communicate well and so it was pretty it was pretty easy was that your first time doing it but yeah very first time 
Uh, what are some of the, I'm sure you've been with, on a, uh, you've had experiences where like a linebacker is doing it uh, usually. What are some of the challenges of doing it when you're someone who also plays some some middle field and plays close to the line like that? Yeah, and the big, biggest challenge is, you know, having your job locked down, but also, you know, first and foremost, you got to communicate to everybody else. And so they're, they're waiting on you, they rely on you for a call. Um, sometimes if the offense, you know, goes no huddle or goes quick and is trying not trying to prevent you from getting a call in, you have to make a few calls. Um, and yeah, so I think the extent of it, I think you just have to be able to communicate cleanly under pressure. Um, and so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I think my teammates enjoyed having me do it. Um, and then, yeah, after you get that to everybody, you just do your job. And so I think it's tough for a lot of people if you're trying to lock into your own job, um, but I was able to accomplish it, thankfully. Did Pete or, or Coach Hurt, uh... Related to you that they want you to do that here, or is, how's that going? Uh, it was mentioned that that's a possibility because that is something that you know is uh, you know a check mark on my resume, I guess you could say, uh, that I have that experience. Uh, it was brought up for sure. Uh, I'm not sure how it'll, it will shake out, but I said I was comfortable doing it, um, and so we'll see. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, yeah, Julian, um, I, I read you started, your dad was a big Notre Dame fan and took you to some games. What, what do you remember the first time, uh, the first time you went to a game and how many did you go to as a kid? Oof, my first game, I was real young. Don't fully remember that. I just remember walking around the people plays, everybody was excited. And I think the one that I remember the most was when I was like 10. I went to a bunch. I went to probably like, you know, growing up, maybe like either seven to 10 maybe. Um, and yeah, the one I remember most, I think I was 10 years old, they were playing Michigan. Uh, I remember Kyle Rudolph had this uh, like 80 or 90 yard completion against uh, Michigan. And uh, I think they lost the game, but I just remember being in the stands. My dad was on the sideline somehow and I was in the, in the crowd. And uh, yeah, I just, there's a lot of good memories there. And so I never thought I'd have an opportunity to play there. Honestly, I was you know, a three-star most of high school. Um, but then I started to get a little more buzz. They came to the picture, they offered me, Brian Kelly offered me and I committed on the spot. Uh, I knew where I wanted to go. Um, it was pretty simple being from Chicago, hour and a half away, good school, good football, you know, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good ride. And, and I've seen you, 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 you appear to be pretty interested in golf. I saw you uh, put out a tweet asking for recommendations of where to golf in Seattle. Have you been able to do any of that yet here? Or? No, not yet. I, ha I'm, I haven't got out there yet. Um, and so ne this next week I'll head out there and, you know, tap in a little bit. Is I'm chipping away at my game. I started during COVID. I do really enjoy golf. I think I just enjoy mastering things. Like, you know, like anybody, you want a hobby that you can grind at and, you know, try to get better at. And yeah, I'm chipping away. I'm uh, like a 16 handicap right now, I'm trying to get to 12 by the end of 2023. And so incremental, incremental, uh, you know, increases. I had a lesson this morning just in honor of the Masters. Uh, and so it, was, it went pretty well. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Yeah, Julian, speaking of that 114 club head speed, you can move it a little bit, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, we did at the end of our session this morning, uh, did a little speed training, and uh, that wasn't my, one, I hit 115, which I wanted to hit, hit today, but it was a little right, and so I, I couldn't put that out there, uh, so I hit the, you know, the straightest one, and it was my furthest carry in total, um, but yeah, I'm, you know, grinding, I'm trying to get, yeah, I'm trying to get inspired by these guys in the Masters right now. Uh, you've played out here a couple times, a couple games out here in Seattle. What did you take away from that experience of playing in the stadium here and those games that you played? I really enjoyed it. Um, the first time I played out there was during COVID, uh, and we won. Uh, the Giants won. Uh, and I was kind of a little bummed because uh, I just wanted to experience, you know, I wanted to experience the 12s. I wanted to be a part of, you know, the, the loudness and the excitement. Um, and it was COVID, so nobody was in the sta uh, stadium, which was unfortunate. Um, but I, it was a beautiful city. I really enjoyed the vibe out there. Um, and then this past year, I was excited to go back with the crowd, and it lived up to expectations. You know, it was loud. Um, they were in it. The this, this team, Seattle, was fired up, and they were playing how, you know, they how their you know their resume is. Uh, they played up to their expectations. Um, in terms of juice, in terms of energy. And yeah, it was a tough game for sure. Um, 
And so I'm excited to have, be in a place that has juice, has energy, has, you know, a defensive mindset that I think is one that, you know, aligns with my brand of ball. Just tough, gritty, and kind of in your face about it, you know, without having to do or say too much. That's kind of how I like to operate, and I feel like that's how the defense operates. And so, yeah, the two experiences I've had out, out there were, were great, and I'm excited to now play home games there. Couple more for you, Jillian. John Boyle. Yeah, Julian, we hear you described as versatile quite a bit. Where do you think that trait comes from? Is that the kind of athlete you are? Did you play a lot of different positions coming up? Like, where do you think you get that from? I'm not sure where I get that from, honestly. Uh, I think I'm, I don't know, I'm able to adapt. I think, you know, I was playing corner in college and the first day, you know, in rookie mini camp, I was asked to get some reps of safety. Uh, and to me, just trying to do my best and show, put my best foot forward, I said, of course. And so I just started repping everything really early. Um, and I think it just comes to me being a competitor. You know, I if I have time to train at any one position, I'll be very clean and do all of that. But, you know, if I cross train throughout the week, you can expect me to be competitive at whatever it is. Uh, and I kind of, yeah, built my brand on that somehow. Uh, and you know, I enjoy it. I think of it just as like playing, you know, pick a ball as a kid. You, know, you kind of just are playing all over the place. And that's how I like to play. As long as I'm around the ball, I'm, I'm happy. Brady. Hey, Julian, do you know uh, either Quandary Diggs or Jamal Adams? And have you talked to either of them since you signed? Uh, I don't. I haven't known them personally. Um, <clears throat> I have reached out to them and, uh, you know, they express some excitement, which is good. And, you know, that's, those are two guys I want, I'm excited to learn from. Um, and so I reached out to them, but I've just been a fan of their game. I think Quandry's been playing at a high level for a long time. Uh, and maybe he doesn't even get the respect that he deserves still. Um, I just have admired him, you know, from afar. And Jamal, you know, being in New York, I, I kind of have known what he's about. Um, the dude's kind of like a bat out of hell. He's just uh, – a great competitor. I've been looking forward to playing with him as well. And so, yeah, I'm excited. I, I got really fortunate to be paired with two dynamic safeties. And uh, are you watching the Masters? Of course. <laughs> Who you got? Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I, I won, you know, I picked Scotty last year. So, I, you know, I, I, I won some, uh, some praise uh, last year. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to see how it shakes out this year. Cool. All right, last question, Bob. Um, yeah, Julian, I, I read that I read somewhere that your your older sister was maybe the best athlete in the family for a long time, and then I know you got a brother who plays college football as well. I just was I just was curious about that, just kind of the the family dynamic of having some athletes in the in the family like that also. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I think I'll put it to that girls generally, you know, sprout up sooner than than guys, um, and so yeah, she was. I figure what, she was like playing like offensive line when I first started playing football. Like she was just a tall girl. She was a Mark center in basketball and like PB basketball. Uh, yeah, she was a stud and she played, you know, some basketball growing up and through high school. My younger brother is kind of the freakiest athlete in our family. Um, he's over at Long Island University right now. He's playing receiver. I mean, he's like five nine, but, you know, can windmill dunk. Like he just kind of has that quick twitch to him. And me, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. You know, I, I'm a good athlete. I think I'm a deceptive athlete. Um, I pack a punch. I'm pretty quick twitched, but you know, no one really says when they look at me play, oh, he's just a pure raw athlete. They think of me being, like you said, a versatile guy, a smart guy, a guy who just plays the game well. Um, so I, I think Notre Dame gave me that tag, honestly. I think just coming out of Notre Dame, that's what you expect. Uh, you get the smart tag put on you. Um, but that's kind of where I fall on my siblings. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Julian, thank you very much for doing this. And thanks to everyone. Yeah, pleasure to meet you guys. Looking Thank you. To you. You as well. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Julian. Julian. Get him straight. Appreciate you guys.